Hey folks, Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. Want to get into some levels discussion, some of the index discussion for this week. This first chart is the SPX versus the yield curve. And you can see, as I talked about in last week's video, the three month, 10 year is inverted. It's still inverted and hasn't really made a lot of progress to come out of the inversion. The two year, 10 year, uh, which is another one to watch. And you can look at last week's video for any info on these yield curves and kind of what to look for in the past and the price activity that's occurred that's in uh, last week's video. In any event, the 10 two year is flat, uh, flattening out a little bit as is the 10 year 30 year. But overall, the price action hasn't shown anything to be worried about. <clears throat> the second thing I'm gonna talk about is something that people probably haven't looked at too much. It's the seasonal chart for the any index you want to look at, right? So I'm going to show a five year daily chart. This overlays the seasonal capability in Thinkorswim. Uh, you, you go to a chart gear, you go to appearance, you go to seasonality, which is in the chart mode. You have standard, which is the regular, you know, price bar chart. Monkey bars is the Thinkorswim version of market profile and this is an expanded market profile which is time price opportunities or TPOs and the last one that most people don't know exists is seasonality and in the seasonality you can take a multi-year chart and overlay year after year after year after year on it and that's what I've done here the other thing I did was I set the price um, axis to show price as percentage so you get the uh, price percentage uh, of the uh, y-axis here showing price percentage. So you can see this blue line is 2019, right? If I highlight the blue line, you'll see at the top, it says 2019, and that's this year. And this year, over the last five years by far, has been the strongest year to date performance at 12.92% uh, close in the quarter. A very significant up year and these are prior years this magenta line is the average of five years of price activity so you can see on average Q1 has been an up quarter over the last five years and we're coming into an earnings season which is uh, April um, to June I'm gonna put uh, let me look at spy I think I had a, a line on spy I did okay so um, April 1st to basically July 1st is Q2. And you can see on average this magenta line shows that we also have on average an up quarter. Uh, notice, however, that near the end of the quarter we had a few years like 2015, this orange line, and this plum line was 2018 where we did have pullbacks towards the end of the quarter which caused the, this dip in the average. So we have had some interesting price activity towards the end of the quarter but by and large I think the banks um, you know the the banking activity which uh, is earnings in the beginning and I think we've got some of the FANG stocks and some of the bigger tech stocks show up in the beginning of the quarter um, you know their activity has driven price on average up so coming into Q2 it looks like on average we do have an up quarter the yeah so I, I'll just leave it at that uh, anybody that wants to go to the seasonality, again, it's going to the gear, under appearance, uh, at the very top chart mode, seasonality, you can pick it there. On the display, you can get ju just the yearlies, just the average over, you know, however many years you have in the time setup, or yearly plus, plus average, which is what I do. All right. Take that off. And I'm going to... store cells so this is the spy you know looking at last week's activity a bit choppy um, I don't think we had a lot of you know we did close on the high but uh, let me go back to a daily sorry uh, let's see we can go one year daily okay that's better uh, we did have a lot of you know doji type days uh, price activity was choppy we stayed well within the expected move which was 52 bucks 
we did have a close that was slightly up from the open. We did add, you know, we talked about the downside continuation. We closed on the low last week. We did have that downside continuation, uh, but we did find support at the cloud and came back out. Everything still says we are clearly in an uptrend and pullbacks into these zones are going to be ones to look at to buy as opposed to jump on shorts. Until we start get, getting closes uh, more than a day under this cloud or some of these 21 and 49 exponential moving averages for me, I'm not looking at trend reversals. Everything right now is uh, opportunities to buy. Um, you know, the inversion of the yield curve and all those things just haven't uh, yielded any kind of significant downside support, uh, you know, performance. We are coming up to in the volume profile on the daily, you know, an, a low volume node overall, and that's where we did find some resistance. So for the SPY, you know, 285.18, the high of this candle and the low of this one is setting right now what our trading range is, right? So that's the area to look at um, on the SPY. Look at the IWM. IWM is weaker. This is the Russell ETF. Uh, we are uh, have not broken this downtrend line, and we are in a bit of a consolidation triangle um, in IWM. And I think this 148.39 area or zone is a pretty big one to watch. And if you can see, um, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see we came up here and tested it, pulled back. We ended up getting through it, came back and retested it, You know, got to a new high locally, came back down closed and found support again in it so to me this is a pretty big level and if we start breaking below 148.39 which is also below the cloud um i you know the russell looks um you know potentially weak now i think if we get this china deal or they keep kicking the can down the road or having the discussions where results keep coming good and things are going good and whatnot every time we get one of those china news uh releases these pullbacks find support and they just start ripping up again. So the you know IWM of course is the growth you know thought of more as a growth uh, area the small caps and I think if we start seeing much more positive activity out of the China deal or just continued dialogue that says things are going well, um, we, we more than likely are going to have you know big upside rallies off of these support areas that we're looking at going forward. Triple Q's, the NASDAQ, uh, it is very strong, hasn't even pulled back to the cloud, found support at the 21 exponential moving average on the daily. You know, we closed near the highs on Friday and had a, you know, a relatively contained week. All of these were within their expected moves um, on the futures, which is also indicative of what's going on in the Q's, uh, Diamonds, IWM and the uh, ES or SPY indexes. So we, we really are in a consolidation uh, volatility contraction zone. You can also see that down here, this purple line is the five day historic volatility, which is a calculation of the actual price movement over five days uh, in terms of volatility, standard deviation of price movement. And you know, right now you can see it's falling again. Note that whenever we do get a fall to these low zones, we do have, you know, a range contraction and volatility is followed by a rapid expansion. And these, you know, Monday or Tuesday moves tend to be quite violent. This one was Wednesday, Thursday. But be looking that when this thing bottoms out again, we're going to get another uh, move one way or the other in these indexes. None of them have kicked off to any long term, um, you know, expansion of range. Right now, they're still, you know, last week on the queues was a sell-off. We had a slightly higher high uh, for the week weekly close, and this one relatively well-contained, um, you know, price activity. So I don't see anything yet other than looking for volatility expansion and range expansion up or down to be coming up in the indexes going forward. Levels, I'm going to go to the... Uh, daily. Another thing I'm going to show here on a, let's say, a 30-day, 5-minute chart. One area to watch that I noticed was very strong this week. This is showing the extended hours and the regular time hour session. The extended hours is this grayish zone. 
Note how many times we found support in this 2790 price level, which I've bolded in the um, in the levels uh, file that Paul will send out. We hit it one, two, three, four, five times, held this significant support. So that's obviously to me a pretty big level to watch. Another one is the 2819 level, this white line. This is the area on the regular time session that we broke out of a um, you know a recent high. So I think you know we've traded back and through this 2819 area quite a bit, and we're now starting to pull away from it. You know we did have a gap in the regular time hour session, as indicated by this blue box, and we did have another one back here. You know a gap that we're coming up to to potentially fill. So I think those are some key levels to watch as this is 2866, which is the local high we had in uh, last week's price activity. So those three levels, 2866, uh, 2819, and the 2790, are probably three of the more key levels to watch into next week. The NQ, oh, um, the expected move up here is, uh, last week was $52, it's $37 this week. So the expectation is uh, for a little bit less of a volatility week. Um, we did hold within the $52 range last week. It was a relatively well-contained uh, week between the high and low excursion, excursions that we had. And uh, the market's looking for a lower volatility week going into the first week. And that's, I think that, you know, my gut says that probably makes a lot of sense because we don't have any real key earnings typically in the first week. I haven't gone and looked yet into what the first week's uh, earnings activities are, uh, but the banks are usually the weeks, uh, week or two following that, and, and those tend to kick off more of what I think of the earnings season. Okay, NQ, uh, the NQ expected move for the week, 120 bucks I've got in here. Again, we did stay within it last week. Um, so we have our, let's see, downside, there we go. So this bright green line and the red line are the expected move for the week. We did have a relatively contained uh, week last week as well. Some up and down uh, price ex exploration, but uh, we never really broke below the 72, 78 level. That may be a key level to watch in the next week to see if we can bust above and up into the 7544 area or below the 7278 uh, price zone, which was, uh, let's see, this was Wednesday's price action in there. And the last one is YM. And the expected move in YM I have at uh, 300, let's see, 353. So up or down 353, uh, we do have a, a gap uh, below. We're working into a gap here, and then we've got another gap that was way earlier in time. Um, or up in, oh, we closed that gap. Never mind, that one should not be there. Looks like we closed it in this area here, so let me remove that. Okay, so, uh, you know, YM activity uh, going into next week, looking for this support area to hold. You know, we are in an uptrending price channel, so you can watch that. Uh, look for breaks over the highs and, and heading towards the expected move. Um, you know, everything again looks like we're headed for another breakout. Who knows what's going to happen uh, at this point, but I think, um, you know, we have an, a more than likely opportunity to continue higher uh, in these indexes based on everything that's been happening. Even the five, uh, five minute cloud has been relatively strong to hold the one day uh, the, yeah the daily cloud been very strong price support you know here we've uh, just we never closed below it we did make some tests down to the lower end of it uh, we had some closes below the 21 exponential which you very hard to see this purple line let me uh, turn off the levels um, you know, here's the 21 EMA. It was the weaker index as we talked about last week. It's now, you know, had a pretty bullish Friday close near the highs, and it's relatively speaking had an up week. If I go to the weekly chart, you know, we are in 
the consolidation triangle, which shows up as, you know, as well in the weekly. And I look for a breakout either high or low on volume outside this box in this uh, consolidation triangle. So that's it for the week. Um, I don't expect a lot of fireworks unless we get news or some action that drives us one way or the other. Uh, watch the yield curve and you know the activity that comes out on that. I think more or less, um, you know, I expect a relatively quiet week. Um, but you never know. Have to watch out. All right, take care, guys. Hope that helps. Take care. Bye.